Welcome to the first lecture of Physics 210. All right, this is a course about electricity and magnetism uh, uh, with calculus. All right, so let's start by discussing uh, electric charge. All right, so for electric charge, there are two kinds of charges. First is the negative charge. So no usually by the minus sign. Second is the positive charge. So no by the plus sign. Okay. Now these charges are carried by particles within the atom. Alright. So negative charges. are carried by electrons okay. and positive charges are carried by protons. Okay. Now, uh, electrons are one that usually flow around. Okay, uh, so by moving electrons around, okay, you can make something either positively charged or negatively charged. So if you want to make something positive charge, you take electrons away. If you want something negatively charged, you let you add electrons to it. So you make something negatively or positively charged. Okay, now, uh, this is physics, so we have discussed units sometimes, so there's a unit of charge, this is called the Coulomb. as the node with basically the letter C, right? Now, uh, the Coulomb is actually a very, very big charge. It's not like terribly useful as a unit of charge. So for instance, one electron has a charge of minus, because it's negative, 1.6 times 10 so it's minus 19 coulomb, right? It's a very, very small number. Okay, so that's, that's the simple basic of electric charges, all right? Let's talk about electric charges, electric properties of material. So electrical properties of materials. Properties. of materials okay so um so some materials are 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 are, are, are allow electrons to flow freely right so some are conductors these are called conductors okay so electrons move freely Okay, so these are basically, these conductors easily conduct 
that's where it comes from, conductors. Electricity. All right, so like basically some examples of these are like for example meadows. Right. Uh, water by itself actually is actually a, not a good conductor, but water never exists by itself. Water always has like some salt, the, the, some salt in it, and when you add salts to water, basically it becomes an excellent conductor. Right. So other things like basically wood or rubber or some other stuff, plastic for instance, these are called insulators. Right. Right. So some are insulators. Okay, and in this case, like basically, uh, electrons don't move freely. Okay, don't move freely. Okay, and in that case, these are basically these can't conduct electricity, at least not easily. Okay, examples would be like, let's say rubber, plastic, wood. All right. So now, uh, let's go back to basically what you can do with these electric charges, all right? So uh, let's talk about the electric force. Okay, so uh, if you have any two charges, right, so the force between two charges, is given by Coulomb's law. Uh, let's write down Coulomb's law here, right? So I'm gonna write it down and draw a picture of it. Okay, so um, actually, maybe I'll draw a picture first, and then I'll write it down. Uh, say this is one charge here. I'll call this one Q1. That's charge Q1. There's another charge here. I'll call this charge Q2. Okay. These are some vectors from from some origin here. This is R1 vector. That is another vector right here. This is R2 vector, okay? And if I'll write down the force between R1 and R2, the force between one and two is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R12 squared R12 hat, okay? So let's, let's know what R12 is. So R12 is this thing right here. R12 is equal to R2 minus R1. So it's a vector basically between Q1 and Q2, right? So what this means is that I'm, R12 is basically how I get from 1 to 2, right? Okay. So, uh, these basically represent just a few things. So, this one is the distance between 1 and 2. Okay, I should write 1 and 2. R12 is equal to, shouldn't have anything there, the norm of R12. Okay, it's just literally the distance there. This is a vector quantity, this is a scalar quantity. This thing is the unit vector between 1 and 2. Okay, so you might think of it as something like this. This is R12 hat, right? And R12 hat is equal to it's a unit vector, so it has a length of one, OK? 
okay? So this can be equal to R12 vector divided by R12, okay? So when you compute the length of this thing, all right, uh, this thing will have a length of exactly one. Okay, beautiful, okay? So this is basically what you think of as, as the length, right? Or the distance between R12. It's so the length of the R12 vector and then there's a unit vector which has the same direction as R12 vector, but only has unit length. Okay. And now the other thing that I have to keep in mind is that there's this uh, funny constant out front. So this is the force. So the force that is being felt, right, is the force basically force from one on two. So this is basically force of one on two. So basically the force that is felt at charge number two. Now, there's one more thing I should mention here. This thing is super important. This is the Coulomb's constant. Right? As of certain value, this value is actually insanely large. This is basically 9 times 10 to 9 newtons meter squared per Coulomb squared, right? So see how this works out. Uh, this thing will have me this will have units of meters, so it'll be this will be meters squared. So I will kill off this meter squared up there. This will have units of coulombs. This will be coulomb squared there. That will kill the coulomb squared. And so basically, finally, the force is going to be expressed in units of newtons, which is exactly what you want. Okay. So let's basically say a few things about this. All right. So the first thing is that we notice that basically k is equal to 9 times 10 to 9 newtons per meter squared, which is bigger than 0. So k is a positive number. Okay? And so what this says, we should note, if q1 and q2 are the same sign, so what I mean by that is that they are both positive and both negative. So let's say imagine both positive here. q1 is positive, q2 is positive. A positive times a positive, well that's a positive number, okay? K is a positive number as well. This distance here is positive as well. This entire thing is positive. The force that's felt on 2 then, basically, is a positive number in the direction of R12, which is away from 1, okay? So this thing here will feel a force that will push away from um, charge 1. So what that means is that basically the force is repulsive, repulsive, okay? On the other hand, if Q1 and Q2 are, I should write this more clearly, are opposite sign, let's go ahead then that. So if they're opposite sign, then let's say Q1 is positive, Q2 must be negative. A positive times negative is a negative number. Likewise, if Q1 is negative and Q2 is the opposite sign, that's a negative times a positive, again a negative number. In that case, this F12, because K is positive, this entire thing is negative, this thing is positive as well, this entire thing will be negative. So Q2, the force of 1 and 2, that it will feel, will feel a negative, will feel a force that's pointing in the opposite direction of R12, which is pointing away from uh, charge 1. So the force will basically be in the opposite direction, i.e. toward 1. So in that case, the force is attractive. Okay? So this is where that expression comes from. It's basically, opposites attract. There it is. Opposites attracting. Okay. So let's go ahead and basically use this in um, uh, a few simple examples. All right? Okay? Um, always good to do a few simple examples here. Okay, let's do the first example. Okay. Uh, let's consider the following. I'm going to do something very simple, right? I'm going to basically put Q1 here. And then I'll put Q2 here. That's Q2. All right? And I'm going to arrange it suitably such that this is going to be R12 naturally. But I'm going to be really nice. I'll tell you basically the distance here. 
distance d, okay, between the two, and everything is pointing along the x-axis. Okay, that's how I denote the x-axis, right? The x-hat vectors in that direction. Okay, so what's the what's the force? So what is the force? So find the force. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Right, so what we will write down is write down Coulomb's law in all its glory. All right, so write that down again. It's Coulomb's law again in all its glory. I'll write down exactly as I have written it. K, Q1, Q2 over R12 squared, R12 hat. All right, let's go ahead and compute this thing out. Okay, so I just need to uh, basically find a few things. I need to find, I need to figure out what this is, find this. And then find this, right? There's a few ways of doing this, all right? I'll just note that this is the direction of R12. Well, R12, what is that? Well, that's just going to be the direction. The magnitude R12 is basically the D distance. And the direction is just X hat, okay? So once I know that, then I know that R12 hat, well, that's just going to be the unit vector from 1 to 2, what is that? Well, that's just going to be x hat, right there. And if I want the, the, the length of R12, what's the length of R12? Well, that's just the magnitude R12, that's just d. Okay? And so I can just basically plug this in. Okay, plug it in right here. That's k, that's Coulomb's constant again. q1, I had not give me what q1 is, so we should write down what q1 is. Q2, that's Q2, divided by, what's R12? Well, that is just D, so it's D squared, okay? And R12 hat, what is that? That's just X hat, all right? Simple enough, right? So let's go and do this. That's the answer right there, okay? Now, let's imagine I make you plug in some numbers, for instance, all right? I'm going to tell you now that basically that, um, uh, I want to say this, Q1, whoops, okay, so let's say is equal to Q2, so the same sign, and this is equal to 10 to the minus 4 coulombs, right? So some rather small number. Okay. I'll also tell you the distance between them is essentially 2 meters, right? So now let's find the force, so find F, okay? Well, uh, let's just write down what we did earlier. So from last time, we just got this. F12 is KQ1, Q2 over D squared, X hat. All right, let's just plug in anything. So, so, okay, so now I have some numbers here. What's K? K is 9 times 10 to the 9, okay, um, uh, Newtons, uh, meter squared over Coulomb squared, okay? Let's write down the next one. This is now, I'm going to have to write down what uh, Q1 is. Q1 was this, 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. Let's try write what Q2 is. That's again 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. Okay. Divided by, D was 2 meters squared, so that's 2 meters squared. And then basically everything points along the x hat, hat axis. All right. So then let's go ahead and write this thing out. So this is just going to be. Let's see, this is uh, 9 times 10 to the 9 times 10 to the minus 4 times 10 to the minus 4. So this together, 10 to the minus 4 times 10 to the minus 4, that's 10 to the minus 8. 9 times 10 to the minus, 9 times 10 to the 9 times 10 to the minus 8, that's just 9 times 10 to the 1, or 90. And then this is basically 2, so 2 squared is 4. So it's going to be basically 90 over 4. Okay, let's get the units right. This meter will be meter squared, I'll cancel out that one. The coulombs here will cancel out two factor coulomb. So 90 over 4 newtons, which is, oh, so then forget, don't forget the x hat, 22.5 newtons in the x hat direction. Okay? All right, simple enough. Okay, let's keep going. All right? Now, a lot of times, basically, you can see that this is. Coulomb is just a horrible unit, but you know what? We're stuck with it, so that's just life, all right? Um, but what, like, what we will use is something like a little bit smaller. We're going to use something called the microcoulomb, all right? The microcoulomb, 
and micro means 10 to the minus 6, right? That's what that means. We're going to, we will use this a lot. All right? That's basically micro, okay? Just remember, you see that mu in front of it, which is a strange looking u? That just means micro, all right? That's what that means, all right? 10 to the minus 6 Coulomb. Okay, so let's basically come up with another one, all right? So now, let's consider the following example here. Well, Q still keep everything in a line. Let's suppose basically, um, we'll break this up a little bit. So there's going to be a Q1 here, all right? And then there's going to be a Q2 here. Oh, everything's going to be on a straight line. And then there's going to be Q3 here, okay? And I'm going to tell you that this is going to be uh, plus 4 microcoulombs. This one is going to be plus 5 microcoulombs, and this can be minus 5 microcoulombs. All right, so they have these a bunch of uh, coulomb charges aligned in, in some straight line. Okay, all right, uh, I'm going to pick the x axis in this direction. I'll call this, this the x, all right? Okay, I can put x hat there in front, but I won't do that, it's just not worth my time right now. And I'm going to basically point out basically this one is just essentially going to be R12. R12 vector, and uh, well, I'll just, I'll just I'll, I'll write that down in a second. Let me just tell you what distance first. So this is essentially D1 here, is this distance here, and then D2 is this distance here. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna tell you that D1 equals D2 is equal to one meter, right? Okay. And I'll find the base. I'm gonna find the force on F. Find force, let's pick a uh, number 2, on Q2. All right, so what do I need to do? So I will first compute the force between um, Q1 on Q2, and then I'll compute the force from Q3 on Q2. All right? So I need two forces here, right? So the total fo the force, 1, 2, it's going to be equal to what I know that is just KQ1 Q2 divided by R12 squared R12 hat. Okay? I also need another force here. The second force I need, comma, force from 3 on 2. That's going to be equal to KQ3 Q2 divided by R32 vector R32 hat. Okay? Alright, so this is basically where it's important. So now I need to figure out what R12 is. R12 is the vector from Q1 to Q2. The other one, oh sorry, this is uh, R12, R1, R32 squared. The other one I need is R32. So R32 goes from Q3 to Q2. That's R32. Okay? Just drawing everything out so everything becomes crystal clear. Or not. I mean, it depends on your, short, your idea of what crystal clear is. Okay, great. Okay, so let's basically figure this out. So, R12, well, what is that? Well, that has a magnitude of D1 and has a direction pointing in the x hat direction. That's simple enough. R 3, 2, okay, actually, let's finish this one. So that means R12, that's just equal to D1. And R12 hat, that's just going to be pointing along the x hat direction. So basically, I'm looking at direction, it's pointing in the positive x hat direction. R32, on the other hand, is something a little different. The, the, it, the magnitude R32 is basically D2, but the direction points opposite the x direction. So in fact, the direction is minus x hat, all right? And so what I have is r32, the, the distance is still d2. That's this thing always has to be positive. And then r32 hat now, this is equal to minus x hat, okay? Now we have all the ingredients. We can go ahead and basically solve this problem. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, the, the total force, on two, that's just basically the force of one on two 
plus the force of 3 on 2. Okay, let's just plug this all in. This is just going to be, uh, we'll just plug each one of these in, but substitute in what we just determined here. That's going to be basically be K, Q1, Q2 over R12 is D1 squared. R12 hat is the X hat direction. Plus now, KQ3, Q2 divided by R32 is going to be D2 squared. Okay? R, R32 squared is going to be D2 squared. And then to R32 hat, that's just the minus X hat direction. All right. Okay? So now the rest of it is just plug and chug. Okay, so let's do that. So this is going to be uh, 9 times 10 to the 9. I'm going to drop the units now, uh, the, the, the units there now. Uh, Q1, I said, was going to be 4 microcoulombs. That's 4 times 10 to the minus 6. Q2, I said, was basically 5 microcoulombs. 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Divided by D1 was 1 meter. Thank God, 1 squared. Okay. And then I need basically R12 hat. That's X hat. Okay. Plus now, this one is going to be first K, 9 times 10 to the 9. Q3, Q3 I said was minus 5 microcoulombs. That's minus 5 times 10 to the minus 6. And then Q2 is going to be 5 microcoulombs. That's 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Divided by, thank God it's 1 again, 1 squared. And this entire thing is multiplied times R32 hat minus X hat. Okay, so don't forget the minus sign. That's super critical. All right. So, if you go ahead, compute this thing out. I'll just write down what the answer is. All right. Uh, this is basically 0 0.18 newtons in the X hat direction. This is going to be plus... 0 0.225 with a minus sign, okay, times minus x hat, right, okay, and so this is ultimately equal to 0 0.405 newton in the x hat direction, okay, simple enough. All right, so that's basically electric forces in one dimension. Right. So let's talk about electric forces in greater than one dimension. Okay. We have all the technology already. We can go ahead and just do that. So electric forces in greater than one dimension. Right. So what that means is two dimension or three dimensions. Right. And there's no like four dimensions or anything like that. We'll start with something simple. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with basically uh, the following um, uh, thing. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start by writing this thing down. Uh, let's suppose I have a um, uh, charge 1. Okay. That's that right there. I have uh, another thing, charge 2. That's right there. Okay. And then I have another thing right here. This is charge basically at position 3. That's right there. Okay. See now it's basically no longer a straight line. It's basically on the piece of paper. It's in two dimensions. Here. Okay. Now to keep things a little simple, I'm going to basically say the following. So first thing I'm going to say is that this distance here, um, I'll write like this. Uh, that distance is D. I'll keep it extra simple. I'll say this distance also is D. Okay, so it's like a size of the square, essentially. All right. And um, I'm going to basically tell you that uh, this is going to be, uh, let's write this as the y-axis. And let's say this is the x-axis. All right, just to orient ourselves uh, correctly. All right. So what I want to do, I want to do the following things. I want to find... Well, actually, I should tell you a few more things. Uh, I'm gonna make this thing also pretty simple. I'm gonna basically give these like different charges. I'm gonna just call this plus Q, plus Q, um, uh, minus Q, okay, for charge two. 
Okay. So now I need to basically I want to find uh, F the net force on number two, and then find F net on number three. Okay, so I'm going to basically figure out the force on this one and the force on that one. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do that really quickly. All right, so uh, to do this, um, let me write down what the what I need to do. Okay, so I see for so say for like um, let's say for this one A and B. So for A, all right, uh, I'm going to need the F net. All right, on two. Okay, what is that? Well, that's going to be the sum of two forces. The force on charge 1 on 2 plus the char force on charge 3 on 2. Okay? So, if we go ahead and uh, let me just see how, how pedantic it is. That was pretty pedantic. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So, this is going to be basically, let's write this thing down. K, Q1, Q2 over R12 squared, R12 hat plus K, Q3, Q2 over R1, R3, 2 squared, R3, 2 half. All right? Okay, so in order to figure out what R1, 2 is and R3, 2 is, half, the length and the half respectively, I need to write down what the vectors are. So let me just draw that picture in. So R1, 2 is basically going from 1 to 2, so it looks something like this. That's R1, 2. Okay? And R32 goes from 3 to 2, that looks something like that. R32 vector. Alright? Okay. So you see it's pointing down and just pointing to the left. Right? Okay, so uh, that means R12 vector, that has a length d. And it points along the minus y direction. Minus y hat. R32, that has a length d and points in the opposite direction of x, so it's minus x hat. Okay, we're gonna need that in just a second. So uh, this thing implies that R12 hat is equal to minus y hat, and R32 hat is equal to minus x hat. Okay, beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and, uh, and, 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 and nail this one. All right. So, if I do that, okay, uh, I have this is my net force. So, I'm just basically substitute everything else out. Um, I can also write down R12, whoops, without the vector, that's just D, R32, that's also D as well, okay? Because all, all the, that's the magnitude. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this thing. Or so it's basically K. Okay, so what's Q1? Q1 was uh, plus Q. So that's plus Q. Okay, Q2 was uh, minus Q. Okay. Divide by R12, that was just D, D squared. R12 hat, that was minus Y hat. Plus K, Q3 was uh, Q. That's Q. Uh, Q2 was minus Q. Divided by R32 squared, that's just going to be D squared there. And then R32 hat, well that's just minus X hat. Okay. And so let's go ahead and uh, combine all this together. Okay. So you multiply this, you K, Q squared, negative, plus times the negative sign again, that's positive. K, Q squared again, that's negative, times negative, that's going to be positive. So it's going to be basically K, Q squared over D squared times y hat plus x hat, right? Right. That's one way of writing it. You guys are right to kq squared d squared y hat, kq squared d squared x hat. Both things the same thing. Okay, so that basically checks off this one right here. Let's now look on this one. Let's go to part b. All right, so for part b, I need to find f net on 3. So f net on 3. So this can be equal to f Okay, so it's going to be, um, I'm going to write it, well, I'll just write it like that. Oh, 1 on 3 plus F 2 on 3, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So let's look at this one again, okay? So I'm going to need, well, let's just write everything out and then we'll figure out what, that, what, what the hell we need. 
Uh, so this is going to be equal to K Q1 Q3 over R13 squared R13 hat plus K Q2 Q3 over R23 squared R23 hat. All right? Okay, so let's look at this thing very, oops, let's look at this thing pretty carefully. All right, I'm going to do this one first, all right, uh, for the reason that this is a lot easier, all right? Okay, so let's look at this thing. So I need R32, so R32, let's go back up to here. R32 points in this direction. R, I mean R23, sorry, R23 points in this direction, okay? So R23 is equal to, the, the magnitude is D, and the direction is x hat, okay? Now, on the other hand, we have um, something else funny here. We need r, so basically I get r23 hat is x hat, r23, the distance is just d, okay? So far, so good, okay? Now, the tricky one is this one, r13, okay? So let's go back up here and draw r13. R13 goes from 1 to 3, so that's basically this bad boy right there, R13 vector, okay? So R13, what is that? That's going to be basically going down D along the Y direction and going basically positive X, going D along the X direction. So this one is actually equal to D minus Y hat plus D in the x hat direction okay super irritating but you know something is is doable at least right so what that means is that basically what we have is that r one three vector is let's write this thing out again okay uh d y hat in the minus y direction plus d in the x hat direction right so I need to compute R13, which is the length of R13 vector. So that's just going to be the square root of, basically it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hypotenuse of a right triangle. So that's going to be equal to d squared plus d squared, which is the square root of 2 d squared, which is the square root of 2 times d. Okay? And so likewise, basically, R13 hat is R13 vector divided by R13. Okay, so that's going to be everything here is going to be divided by square, one, square root of two, 2 times d. So if I do that, it's going to be basically be equal to d minus y hat plus d times x hat divided by square root of 2 times d. Did the d's kill each other? And so I can really write this as minus 1 over square root of 2 y hat plus 1 over square root of 2 x hat. Okay? Okay, I'm going to need all this basically in just a second. All right. So I have this. Okay? Let's go ahead and uh, plug literally everything in now. Okay? All right. Uh, first thing I'll do is write that down again. So, uh, f net on three okay because it's a starting new page we are going to copy what we had last time uh k q1 q3 over r13 squared r13 hat plus k q2 q3 r23 squared r23 hat okay all right and we have our list from last time of basically all the hats and, and stuff like that so let's go ahead and do this first okay so K, okay, let's look at the picture again. Um, Q1 was plus Q. Uh, Q3 was another plus Q. Divide by uh, R13 squared. So R13 is square root of 2 times D. If I square this, that just becomes square root of 2 squared is just 2. And then the D squared is D squared. Okay? 
uh, super annoying part now is basically I have to plug in the R13 hat. R13 hat is something unfortunately a little bit um, ugly, but we can just deal with it. 1 over square root 2 times x hat. Close that up. Okay. All right. And now, uh, plus, so that's just this part right there. And this part right here is going to be k. Okay, let's write down what um, q2 is. q2, we decided was minus q. So that's minus q. q3 was plus q, thankfully. Okay, the rest is actually pretty simple now. R23, R23 was just d, so that's d squared. And then R23 hat is just x hat. All right, okay. Just a little ugly, but you know something? It is still um, workable. All right, so let's basically um, uh, smash all this together and get it to work, okay? So this is just going to equal to, so now we just write everything down. All right, and then everything will be fine. Okay, so the first part, this part here is k q squared over 2d squared. Okay, that's that part right here. Um, let me think, uh, I'll write it like this. 1 over square root of 2 x hat minus 1 over square root of 2 y hat. I just flip this thing. It, 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 it's still the same thing. Plus, let's do this part. That's uh, k q squared. Don't forget the minus sign. Minus up here for it. Divide by d squared x hat. All right. Okay. So, um, so the only tricky part is adding up these things. So you get there's an x hat here. X hat. We can add those x hat together. The y hat's not added against anything else. So we just leave it like that. Okay, so uh, to do this thing uh, successfully, we're going to note that this thing is exactly equal to square root of 2 over 2. It's just multiplied by square root of 2 over the top and bottom. Okay, square root of 2 over 2. Okay, and so uh, if you do that, the 2 times the 2, that's going to be a 4. So it's essentially going to be, uh, we factor everything out, k q squared over d squared. Okay, this thing right here will be. 1 half times square root of 2 over 2, so it would be square root of 2 over 4 x hat minus square root of 2 over 4 y hat. Oops, don't forget that. Uh, and then finally, I had to put a minus sign uh, x hat. All right, you want to be pedantic, so 1 out in front. Okay. All right, so if you just basically plug in numbers here, so these two will add together, actually subtract from here. And this thing will basically live all by its lonesome. This is just going to be equal to, if you wanted to plug in numbers here, uh, minus 0 0.65 x hat minus 0 0.35 y hat. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So uh, that's basically the electric uh, force in, uh, in two dimensions. And three dimensions extends easily. Okay. So now, let's talk a little bit about the electric field. Let me just uh, organize the notes a little bit. There we go. Okay. So the electric field. Okay, let's go ahead and do a plug up. So, so this electric force is kind of interesting. Um, the electric force acts at a distance okay so it's kind of funny it's like force at a distance All right so what we can visualize this so okay, we, we can visualize this Right, as a field
on which charges feel feel a force. Okay? So basically the way you can think about it is that like there's some feel which is permeating everything, kind of like uh, the force from Star Wars. Feel permeates everything. And if you're charged, right, you will be able to detect this force. Okay? Okay. So uh, to think about this, right, we can write the force, the electric force is equal to Q0, so this is some test charge times electric field. Okay, so this is some, some, some test charge. Okay, and so this thing just becomes the local electric field. Okay, that's the way we write it, right? So, if we were to think about this, right, uh, let's think about basically, let's, let's look at this in terms of um, a very simple example here, right? If we were to think about this, then let's imagine I have some massive charge, uh, some charge at position one, and then some other charge, uh, position two, and at position two, I'll put a little small test charge right there, Q0, all right? And at position one, I'll put another charge right here, I'll call this busy capital Q, okay? Now, I know what the force on one on two is going to be. The force one on two is equal to K, Q1, Q2, over R12 squared, R12 hat, all right? Okay? And so, if I plug in the values of Q1 and Q, that'd be K, capital Q, little Q0, R hat, 1 and 2, divided by R12 squared, okay? And I note that this is equal to some force F1 and 2, which itself is some force, which is going to be equal to Q0 times electric field, all right? Okay. So now I can basically go and figure out what the electric field looks like, all right? So what this means is that uh, the only difference between the force and the electric field is that I have a Q0 multiplying the electric field gives me the force, so that Q0 here. So what this means is that the electric field in this configuration at position 2 is equal to K Q over R12 squared R12 hat, right? Okay, so that's pretty simple. Now, if I start putting a bunch of charges everywhere, right, that means that for charge, for a collection of charges, The electric field at a position P here, well, that's just going to be the electric field is equal to for the ith charge KQI over RIP squared, right? RI P hat, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, technically, it looks like that. Okay. So this is what's called uh, Coulomb's law. For E fields, right? It's just basically writing the same thing down as Coulomb's force law, but now basically for some arbitrary position, okay? And, okay, the electric field for the collection of charges at the position P, that's equal to the sum of I of all the charges at position P, okay? And so basically this is, um, uh, so this means it add up all the electric fields f 
from uh, individual charges. Okay. All right. So um, this idea, however, is also called superposition. Right. Turns out to be a extremely useful concept um, uh, in electricity and magnetism, and actually in a lot of areas of physics as well. Okay. Um, right. So uh, we should we should start thinking about uh, this field is some vector quantity, so you can have some arrows associated with it. So let's think about like basically um, the field lines, okay? So the field line. Okay. So what we will notice is that this thing has some direction associated with it, right? Uh, if you look at it, right? Uh, or you look at this more ge or this more generally, okay? Um, this points away from the charge I, R I P points away from the charge to the position P. And then this thing is positive, this is positive, because that's the distance squared. And so depending on what the charge is, basically electric fields can point basically away from the charge QI, QI or toward the charge QI, all right? So in particular, okay? Um, if QI is positive, then EIP will point away from it. If QI is negative, they will basically point toward it. And so electric field lines point away from plus charges and toward minus charges. Okay? So when you draw it, field lines, looks like that. This is a plus charge. You want electric field lines pointing away from it. Okay. And if it's a minus charge, you want electric field lines pointing toward it. Okay. Now, the other thing is that basically, sorry, I should show you that. So that's a way of toward. Okay. The other thing I should say that is that basically um, higher density of lines. means higher field strength. Okay. And then uh, the number of lines from a charge or toward charge from or toward a charge is proportional uh, to the charge. I'll just oops, I'm out of space to the charge. So, just to illustrate this thing in one simple example. Suppose I have a charge here, QQ. I'll put a big plus sign here, just to make sure it's a big plus. And then a charge here, minus Q, right? So, first of all, I know that this minus sign, all the electric fields I point toward. So, I'll point them toward it. This is a plus Q, so I know all the charges have to point away from it. Okay. 
okay? The number of lines has to be associated with the charges, proportional charge. So this, this one has basically two cues, twice the number of charges, this one. So in fact, this one has four lines, I better have at least twice the number there. So this is eight lines there, all pointing away, okay? And then you just freehand draw up is how the thing should connect. Okay, and let's just draw that down there, and then draw these away to infinity. Okay, right. And then finally, I should say one more other thing. You know it's here. No lines cross each other. Kind of like Ghostbusters, you never cross the streams. Same thing here, you never cross electric field lines. All right. Let's do a few examples of electric fields. I'll call them E fields. Examples. All right. So, let me first start with this following example. We'll basically build it up. Uh, we'll do 1D first, and then we'll basically move on to that. Let me see how much I want to do here. Right, okay, let's do that. Okay, so, uh, let's do number one. Very simple example here, okay. Um, right, let's suppose I put two charges here. Um, well, this is position one. Uh, I'll put a plus Q right there, whoops, and I'll put a minus Q right there, good, alright, and then the distance between these two charges is the distance uh, D, and I'm going to find the charge at position A, which is exactly halfway, so it's D over 2, okay, alright, and I'll point the x-axis in this direction, alright, just to be simple. Okay, so I'm going to find E at A, all right? Okay, so the electric field at any position P is equal to the sum of the electric fields I to P, okay? So this is just going to be equal to E, uh, let me call this basically, well that's 1, I'll call this the number 2 then, E1 I want to say P here, plus E to P, okay? And this P refers to basically position A here, all right? Okay, so uh, don't forget these are vectors here. So this can be equal to, let's not forget the um, um, uh, Coulomb's law for electric fields, that's K QI divided by R, well Q1 say, R1P squared R1P hat plus uh, K Q2 divided by R2P squared R2P hat. Okay? So let's just basically keep this in mind. Uh, R2P is pointing in this direction. R1P is pointing in that direction. R1P vector, R2P vector. All right? And you can basically get R2P hat is going to be in the minus x hat direction, and R1P is going to be positive x hat direction, and the distances associated with both is just D over 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do this then. So this is just going to be equal to, um, let's see, this is going to be uh, K plus Q divided by R1P, well that's just going to be D over 2 squared. Okay, and this is all pointing in the x hat direction, plus k, uh, this is a minus q, okay, divided by d over 2 square r2p, which is at the distance right there, uh, and then this r2p is in the minus x hat direction, all right? So now, if you plug this all together, this is going to be equal to 2kq over d squared over 4, right, x hat, so that's just 8 kq over d squared in the x hat direction. Okay, pretty simple. Okay, 
Uh, let's try something slightly more complicated. Let's draw the same plot again. Okay. And then in that case, I'm going to basically put, pick a position x here. So this is going to be some distance x. And then this is going to be some distance d minus x because the entire distance here is the distance d. Okay. So now in this case, all right, I want to figure out the position of position x. Let me write down what that is. So write down ep vector is sum of i e i p vector. That's going to be e 1 p vector plus e 2 p vector. Okay. I'll call this basic one and two again, just for um, okay. And so basically, I'm still pointing along the same direction. So in fact, basically, r one p is going to be x hat again. R two p is going to be minus x hat again. And I'm assume that this thing sits somewhere in the middle, all right? Otherwise, it just gets a little complicated. Well, it's still fine. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, so this is just going to be equal to uh, again. Let's plug everything in. Um, well, I'll just write everything out carefully. K Q one over R one P squared, R one P hat plus K Q two R one R two P hat R two P squared. Okay. So go ahead and uh, and uh, write everything out. This is going to be equal to. Um, K Q, or that's a positive Q there, divided by X squared. This is in the X hat direction. Plus K minus Q over R 2P. So that's going to be D minus X now squared. Okay, that's the distance there. R 2P, that's again minus X hat. Right, okay, and so basically this minus kill off that minus. That's just going to be equal to k q over x hat x squared plus k q over d minus x squared in the x hat direction. All right. Okay, that's nice. Now, uh, right. Okay, so let's take that this simple example again, and then we're gonna basically make this um, again slightly complicated. All right, let's draw the same thing again. So I like I always like this uh, particular example. Okay, let's basically put the plus q again here, minus q here. Okay, I'll call this one. I'll call this two. That's one. Sorry. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically pick a position here. Okay, and I put this as some distance y away. Okay. All right. So it basically extends it to 2d. All right. But the answer is still the same. So let's write that down. Ep is equal to sum of eip. Well, that's going to be e1p plus e2p. Right. Same thing as before. K Q one over R one P square R one P hat plus K Q two over R two P oops, square R two P hat. Okay, let's draw R one P. R one P goes from charge one to that one, so that's this this direction right here. R one P vector and R two P points in this direction here. R two p vector, right? And let's forget this is some distance uh, d. Put the x hat in this direction, y in that direction. All right, okay. And then to make it a little more pedantic, we'll put the hats in front of them just to make sure that we uh, don't get these things too confused. Right? Okay. So you can see basically everything is pretty straightforward. All right. Uh, R one p vector. That's just y times the y hat direction. So that means that R1P is y and R2, R1P hat 
is the Y hat solution. The only tricky one is R2P, all right, because it has basically two components to it. It has some a component belongs the X hat direction and some component in the Y hat direction, all right? Let's just write that down. 2P. Well, that's going to be one part in the Y hat direction. That's nice. Plus, now this is some distance D. D in the minus X hat direction. I got to basically point this way and point that way. Okay. All right. So, what that means, R. 2p is just equal to the square root because again it's an equal is a right triangle here y squared plus g squared that's it can't simplify any more than that okay and then r2p hat well that's just going to be equal to r2p vector over r2p right and unfortunately this is also going to be slightly complicated but we can just deal with it as well uh this will be d minus d x hat plus y, y hat, divided by square root of d squared plus y squared, okay? That's the second term back there, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do this again, all right? So let's look back at this, let's plug everything in, all right? So this one's not too bad, k is a positive q over uh, this was y, y squared, and this is in the y hat direction. Still okay. This is k minus q, slightly annoying, but not the end of the world, divided by r2p. Okay, so that's a little bit annoying, but this is square root, but you want to square it. So if I take square, I'll take the square root away. y squared plus d squared. Time r2p hat, this is the annoying part. No escape from this one, okay? minus d x hat plus y y hat divided by square root of y squared plus d squared. Okay? All right. So, uh, if I want to simplify this a little bit, I need to combine the components which have y hats to with each other. And so, this is going to be equal to, there, there's just no escape from this one. Um, uh, KQ, there's a common factor of KQ out in front of everything, okay? There's a Y hat times, uh, this is 1 over Y hat, 1 squared, right? Uh, and then this will be a minus sign, yes, because of that Q is a minus sign right there. Um, this will be Y over Y squared plus D squared. So this is the unit power 1 to the power 1 half, to so 3 halves power. Okay, this is such as life. Okay, and then let's add the second part. Uh, plus now, there's a minus for minus, so there's a plus. KQ over y squared plus d squared to the 3 halves power again. And then this will be basically be a, um, uh, uh, a d and then multiply everything times x hat. All right, okay, so it's a little complicated but there's no escape from it. All right, so now let's talk a little about motions of charges in an electric field. Uh, electric field. Okay. So, how do we do that? Well, you recall the force is just some charge times the electric field. Well, if there's no other thing, if this is equal to F net, it's equal to net force, this is equal to the mass times acceleration, right? Okay, by second law. Newton's second law, that is, right? All right, or as we've written before, A is equal to F uh, net divided by M, okay? All right, so this turns out to be super important for tiny charged particles, right? So as an example, right, let's imagine that I have um, an electric field, which is 
100 newtons per coulomb in the x hat direction, right? Um, I have some uh, electron, right? The mass of the electron is basically 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, so really small, okay? And then I want to basically say, um, uh, so this is basically, um, uh, let me just try to write this down. So that's going to be, let's draw a picture of this thing. So there's my electric field. This is my x hat x direction. And I'm going to say this electron basically is a minus e. It's moving along with some velocity, some enormous velocity initially, okay, in this direction. Uh, it's equal to 10 to 6 meters per second. So this is a fast, fast, fast lecture. Sorry, should have drawn the picture a little more clearly. Okay. Okay, so this is some really fast electron moving along. And I want to ask basically what happens to it. Well, when this electron hits this electric field, it's going to feel a force. Because it feels a force, and then all the forces on, it's going to feel acceleration. Let's compute the acceleration. The acceleration is equal to F over M. Right? And so this is just going to be um, uh, the electron. So that's minus E times the electric field. Right, so it's basically Q times the electric field, in that case Q is minus E. Right? And this is going to divide by the mass, that's just ME. Okay, so the electrons are really, really light. Okay, let's go ahead and compute this thing out. Uh, so you recall what the charge of the electron is, that's minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Right, I won't write the coulombs there, it's just not me. Times the electric field, that's 100. Okay, that's a much more reasonable, no much more reasonable number. Uh, divide this by this ridiculous mass now, 9 times 1, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, so you basically do all these numbers together, you get minus 1.8 times 10 to the 13 meters per second squared, right? That's the enormous acceleration, right? So let's ask what happens to it, all right? Um, and this is all pointing in the x in the uh, electric field direction, which is in the x hat direction. So it's x hat. So this thing will feel a force acceleration that's moving in this direction. Will feel a acceleration that is opposing its motion right now. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and figure out what happens to the velocity. Okay. So the velocity is equal to. Um, let me see. Um, Velocity is equal to, oops, sorry, um, the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time, right? So this is going to be equal to 10 to the 6 meters per second minus 1.8 times 10 to the 13 times t, okay? The, opposite, the acceleration is in the opposite direction, okay? So um, uh, v equals 0. At what time? It turns out that V equals 0 is equal to 10 to the 6 minus 1.8 times 10 to the 13 times T, right? This implies to time is equal to 6 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds, right? So it's essentially, what the heck is that? It's um, 6 one-hundredth of a microsecond, right? That's really small really quickly. So this electron is moving at some enormous velocity, 10 to 6 meters per second or so, all right? Will basically literally come to a stop almost instantaneously, all right? Okay, so that's good. Um, let me try to see what else I want to try to do here. Right, uh, right, okay. So let's do one really complicated example, all right, okay? So let's combine this with other forces. Okay. Um, 
And so the one I'm going to take, for example, is the following thing. Uh, I'm going to do something simple, relatively speaking. I'm going to imagine that I have a big charge Q here. And this big charge Q is basically a staple. So this is fixed. And then I have a little charge Q here. And this charge can move freely. All right, let's suppose it's sitting on some table here, frictionless table. Okay, and what we do, we want to attach a spring to them as well. Okay, this spring has some, K, has some spring constant K. All right, uh, and because we chose K to be a Coulomb constant already, I'll call this KS. This is some spring constant. Okay, so in this case, the net force, that's going to be equal to the force due to the electric field. The electric force plus the force due to the spring, the spring force. Right? And to make things a little simpler, I'm going to basically put in the axis here. That's the x-axis. So f of s is equal to, I'll keep it simple, minus k uh, x x hat, all right? And I'll put this here, x equals zero here, all right? Some, some equilibrium point, all right, for instance. Okay. All righty. Um, well, let's just think about this. Yeah, I guess I'll, well, let's, I'm going to basically put these all together. It's kind of, it's kind of confusing. I'll, I'll squeeze them up together, basically. All right. So, um, uh, so, so what's going to happen now, all right? Let's write down what the electric force is going to be. Electric force is equal to K Q Q divided by the distance between these two, this is basically x squared. Okay, so let's say this is uh, x. All right, and then the direction is r12, all right, which is basically from this is 1, 2, that's number 2 here. So it's just going to be basically in the x hat direction. All right, okay. So, first thing I want to do, I find equilibrium. Okay, that means the F net is equal to zero, right? So there's no net forces there, you can find the equilibrium point, okay? So let's basically do this together first. So F net will be equal to zero. I'll set that equal to zero. This is going to be equal to the electric force, KQQ over X squared X hat minus the spring force, KSX X hat, right? Look at this, plus and minus sign, that's the same thing, minus that. Okay, so if I do that, because I set the equal zero, that means I have basically KSX is equal to KQQ over X squared, right? Or X cubed, bring the X squared up top, bring the KS on the bottom, is equal to basically KQQ over KS, which means that X is equal to, the equilibrium point, is equal to um, KQQ over KS to the one-third powers. Okay. Okay. So that's my equilibrium point. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to consider, I'll just start a new page on this one. Let's consider small um, let's, uh, let's consider small um, how do I want to say this um, uh, motions around the equilibrium point, x eq. So basically I'll write x is equal to x equilibrium plus some really small delta x, right? 
So in that case, the force is equal to the electric force, which is a function of x, plus f, the spring force, which is also a function of x, right? That is equal to k q q over x squared x hat minus k s of x, right? Okay, so I'm going to substitute this thing in, plug it in anywhere where I see x. So it's going to be equal to k q q over x e q plus delta x squared, right? This is still in the x hat direction. All the directionality stays the same. I uh, might just factor that out, just for the heck of it. Minus k s x e q plus delta x, right? All in the x hat direction. Okay, so you have this thing, if this is equal to the net force, this is equal to ma, right, vector, okay? And generally, this is actually not solvable. Um, it's just, unfortunately, it's just not, okay? Uh, but if delta x is small, i.e. small motions around it, you could tailor expand everything, okay? So for delta x is small, okay? we can consider a Taylor expansion right so how do you tell expansions for those you remember from calculus right for a function f of x around a round x equals x zero, right? f of x zero plus delta x is, should be approximately equal to, right? f of x zero plus the derivative of f df dx evaluated at x equals x0 times delta x plus basically one half d squared f dx squared evaluated x equals x0 delta x squared plus basically uh, dot 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 okay right now what we want to do is usually we can drop uh, terms larger than delta x squared, right? And sometimes you can even drop the term delta x squared. Most of the time you will drop that delta x squared. So this is means, what this means is that f of, um, of uh, x plus delta x is approximately equal to f of x zero plus partial plus df dx evaluate x equals x zero delta x plus order delta x squared okay now where you drop it is actually super critical right so what you have to do what what what, what has to happen is that when you compute this thing, what will turn out to happen is that there will be one term, and hopefully the first term will be zero, and so you go to the next term, right? And if this next term is not zero, then you drop everything above it, okay? However, if this term is zero, then you go to one higher term, right? So that's a little bit tricky sometimes, all right? Okay? But in this case, I'm going to just tell, let you know that we only need to go to this term, and then we're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this um, uh, uh, like uh, uh, as we speak. Okay, so let's consider the first one, the spring term f of s 
xe plus delta x, right? We're going to expand around xe. So this is going to be equal to minus k um, xe plus delta x, all right? Okay, so let's follow the formula. This says that this is going to be equal to uh, f of x at x0, so f of s at x0, so it's going to be f of s at xe, okay, plus the derivative of f of s dx divided by x equals xe times delta x, and then I just, I just basically said earlier that I'm going to basically, everything else is going to be order x squared, right, and I'll be able to drop that hopefully. Okay, and this should be approximately two. Now in this case, it's actually not so bad. So f of x and x e, well what's f of x? That's just basically k minus ks. So minus k x e. And the derivative of basically uh, kx, so you recall that f of s is equal to minus k, sorry, k spring x. So df dx, right, df s, dx, that's just minus ks. So this is going to be equal to minus ks. There's no need to evaluate because it's a pure constant, times delta x. Now, you will notice that if I just had multiplied this out, I would have gotten the same answer. Right? But that's okay. Okay, this is a little, slightly more formal way of doing it. In this case, this works out. In most cases, it won't work out as nicely. Right? So let's basically keep this little piece of information in mind. Okay, so that's the first piece. Okay, now the second piece we need is basically the tail expansion of Fe, of Xe plus delta X. Okay, so let's again recall this is approximately equal to Fe of Xe plus Df dx e of e evaluate x equals x e times delta x right and then like everything else I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to draw okay all right so uh, let's write down f e again that's just gonna be equal to um, k q q over x squared now there's some x hats those are constants essentially we don't worry about them okay let's basically do this so this first piece right here well, that's just kqq over xe squared. Plus, take the derivative of this one, let's say, dfe dx, all right, is equal to d by dx is this thing. So let's see, this is uh, to the minus 2. So it's minus 2 kqq over x cubed, okay? For those who don't remember, this is essentially the same as uh, derivative um, a x to the n is n a to the x to the n minus one. In this case, a is basically k q q, n is basically to the minus two, n is equal to minus two. You plug that in, you just get this answer right here. Okay, so plus, let's write this thing down. This is df dx, evaluate x equals xe, so that's basically minus two kqq over xeq times delta x. All right, okay. So now let's just plug literally everything together, right? So now um, we have to get our force, right? Uh, so where's our force? Uh, right, we're going to do that stupid Taylor expansion, right? So the force is going to be equal to um, F of S plus Fe, and the small motions around Xeq. Sorry, uh, this should be Xeq, Q, Q, Q. X e q. <coughs> Sometimes I skip I skip letters just to make my writing a little bit less arduous. Okay, uh, and this is x e q again. All right, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna get the little miracle now. All right, um, 
So first thing is that uh, we're going to write everything down. So f of s was basically, let's copy this thing down, minus k s x e q minus k s delta x. That's the first term. Okay. Second term was just going to be this one, uh, plus k q q over x e q squared um, minus now 2 k q q over x e q cubed times delta x. All right? Okay. Let's work this thing out. And in order to make this thing all work out at the end, we have to recall what x e q is. All right? But we'll write everything out first, and then we'll worry about the rest. So let's write that everything out. I'm going to gather all the delta x terms again and put all the constants down front. So it'd be k s oops, k s x e q plus k q q x e q squared minus k s delta. Well, I, I'll actually do it like this. Uh, I'll put it um, delta x times k s plus 2 k q q over x e q cubed uh, times delta x. Right? So that's the, the two terms right there. Okay? Beautiful. All right. So, um, uh, we're almost at the end now, okay? Okay, so what's going to be amazing about this, right, is that this term right here is f of s at x e q plus f e at x e q, right, which is f net at x e q, which we just determined is zero. Okay? If you don't believe me, plug in x e q and then multiply everything out, you get zero. Right? Okay, so this part goes away. That's always a miracle whenever you do expansion around equilibrium points. The first term must go away by definition because equilibrium. This term is not going to be zero, it's going to be something nice. Let's look at what it looks like. Alright, so uh, to do that, I have to recall that x e q is this term here, right? So x e q is equal to k q q over k s to the one third power. And of course, being physics, things have to work out. The one third q will, will basically unwind all the stuff, so you end up getting something that looks like this. Minus, um, this turns out to be a k s here. So it would be basically ks plus 2ks minus 3ks delta x. That's equal to f of xe plus delta x. All right? Okay. So this is equal to ma. And what's ma? Okay, well, I'll just put it in. What's ma? Well, a is equal to basically um, uh, d squared x dt squared, right? But then this is can also be written to because we're expanding around small x d by dt squared of x e q plus delta x, right? But x e q, this is a constant. Sorry, should put it. This is a constant here, right? And so because that's a constant, this is in fact just equal to d squared delta x dt squared. Right? So now we're, we're, we're essentially we're completely done, right? So what this implies is that this is equal to m d squared dt squared delta x is equal to minus uh, 3ks delta x or written in a slightly more compact way, m 
delta x double dot is equal to minus 3 ks delta x, right? Now, if you've taken physics 209, you have seen this equation before. This is an example. This is an example of simple harmonic oscillators, okay? Right? So basically recall x double dot is equal to minus omega squared x, right? And the solution is x is equal to some amplitude a cosine omega t plus delta, right? Where this is what's called the angular frequency. This is the phase, and this is the amplitude. Okay, right. So basically, we can go ahead and uh, and just do it, right? So we are, if you can write in this form, you know what the solution. Is. So let's write down what this answer, what the equation was. I got m um, uh, delta x double dot is equal to. Um, minus 3 ks delta x, right? Should tell you that that little q had a mass m. I right, should have told you that earlier. Okay, so now I need to write in this form. How do I get in that form? So I just divide by m, divide by m, okay? So that's delta x double dot is equal to minus 3 ks over m delta x. And now if I redefine this one as omega squared, 3ks over m, then I get something that looks exactly like that. Delta x double dot is equal to minus omega squared delta x. Immediately, I write down what the solution is now, right? A cosine omega t plus delta, right? I, I can't set what omega a is and delta unless I know more information, right? But you know a few things already. So first of all, this is the angular frequency. So the frequency is equal to omega over 2 pi. So that's just going to be, uh, well, and the period t is equal to 1 over the frequency, which is 2 pi over omega. And so you instantly get the period of the oscillation is 2 pi omega, omega squared is this one, so that's just going to be mean that this is going to be square root of m over 3 ks, right? So if you look at the earlier picture of what I drew, let's see if I have that somewhere still. Man, I lost it. Oh, here we go. Okay. Look at this earlier picture. I should basically remind myself this is a picture m. Okay. What this thing would do is that it would just oscillate at a certain frequency, and that frequency would be the same as if the spring was three times stronger, right? So the fact that you have this big little charge here, this would cause an oscillate back and forth around the equilibrium point, right, with this particular period, okay, and a particular high frequency. Okay, so that's it for um, the first week of lecture. You now have enough information to basically do your first problem set.